Oh, happy day. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly favored, flavored, anointed, and appointed, and dead to yourself? Now, that's not asking too much. We're to be obedient to that, right? God delights in the death of his saints, and it's a good night to die. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and tell them it's a good night to die. Good night, yeah. To yourself. To yourself. Oh, happy days. Jesus said you must deny yourself. Pick up your cross and fight if you're going to follow him. Amen? Oh, thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Would you grab your swords tonight? Yes, and turn to Proverbs 2. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. Amen. Training for reigning. Is anybody going through it tonight? Don't raise your hands. <laughs> Remember, everyone say, I'm going through it. Going through that means you're not going to stay there. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, when you go through it, there's always a way out. Proverbs 2, verse 1. Let's speak it, because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you think, and what you think is what you become. Is everybody there? That's, my son, if you receive my words, hello, if you what? Receive my words, not reject. See, when God says, if you will receive my words, it means you take it and use it. See, so many people just take it and then put it on the shelf, and they think they got it. No, you didn't get it. In fact, you just gave it up. So when he says, if you receive my words, was he's desiring that you receive it and you use it. In other words, you execute it. If you receive my words in what? Treasure my commands within you. So that you incline your ear to what? Wisdom. Wisdom. Now remember, wisdom, this is divine wisdom. Not carnal wisdom or flesh wisdom. This wisdom tells you what to do because this wisdom is involved with the attributes of the Holy Spirit. This wisdom tells you what to do spiritually. Does everybody get it? Amen. Tells you what to do. Everyone say wisdom. wisdom. Tells me what to do. Yes. Understanding, Understanding tells me how to do it. Mm. So he says that if you incline your ear to wisdom, so it means you got to hear what he's telling you. And apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. Now look at here. So what he just said, he says, look at wisdom and understanding brings what? Discernment. Discernment. And we need to discern all the things that's going on. See, discernment is also associated with perception. We'll talk more about this in a minute. In verse 4, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will what? Understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth. Where does he give wisdom from? His mouth. And knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. So there's something important, the upright. I mean, those who are walking uprightly. He doesn't release wisdom from above. This is divine wisdom, does not go to a sinner. Divine wisdom goes to those who are walking in divine order. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright 
and he is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of the justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity in every good path. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul. Discretion will preserve you and understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil and from men who speaks perverse things and those who leave the path of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. Very powerful. So remember, the wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Knowledge is substance. God's word is substance. That's how he created all things. Amen? So when he speaks, he's releasing substance to be utilized. When he releases it, wisdom comes to tell you how to do it. Amen? What to do. Understanding tells you how to operate it. So in this is important because discretion is discernment. And discernment, there's something vitally important about discernment. What it does is it brings divine sight. Everyone say divine sight. It allows you to see. Now there's something again about discernment which is so powerful. It's also involved with how you perceive things. So with wisdom and understanding and discernment, you will be able to perceive things, interpret things. What God is trying to tell you. Now there's something that we're going to work on tonight. It's called dimensional perception. Dimensional perception. In dimensional perception, it gives you the ability to discern and perceive in, from your past, present, and future. In all three dimensions. Does everybody understand that? Jesus walked in all dimensions while he was here because he was filled with this Holy Spirit. He walked in past, he walked in present, and he walked what? In future. That's why I was able to know everybody's past. Amen? He was able to expose the things that were going on in the present. And he was able to bring people into the future by telling them what was coming. So in this area where we need dimensional perception, in-dimensional perception. This perception we're talking about is called timing. Perception is associated with timing. If you do not understand God's timing, you will always be out of order. And the enemy loves to get people out of God's timing. He likes, that's where anxiousness comes from. That's where people miss God's time. Then they have to recycle to reconnect in his time. The enemy is always trying to influence us to move out of God's time. Without perception, you can't get it. Amen? You can't get it. So we need dimensional perception so that we know and understand past, present, and future of God's timing. When we understand these things, we are walking in divine order. If we don't understand this, we're easily swayed. Is everybody all right? 1 Corinthians 2. Oh, happy days. Dimensional perception. You know, what the enemy always likes to do is mess up with our perception. So what he does is he likes to tell us lies. This whole world is in bondage. It says it's under corruption. Why? Because they've been lied to. Because what's ruling this world is a liar. Amen? And Satan's greatest weapon is deception. So lies are deception. So people cannot overcome deception without perception. Amen? Verse 6. Second, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 6. Let's speak it together. So how many of y'all understand we need wisdom? Amen? 
The word says that wisdom is the key to all things. Oh, yes. Verse 6, however, we speak what? Wisdom among those who are what? Mature. Mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age or this world, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, eye has not seen or ear heard nor entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things that a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one and again, no one knows the things of God. No one knows the things of God. No one. Except the Spirit of God. Now we've received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So it's important to get filled with the Spirit of God, isn't it? So as you and I get baptized and filled with the Spirit of God, and there becomes a connection. This is a connection to above. See, but the enemy likes to infiltrate and mislead us and reconnect us to things that are demonic. Familiar spirits, divination spirits, spirits that lie and deceive. Demonic spirits, demonic wisdom, worldly wisdom, worldly understanding. Amen? All of these areas that bring torment, they don't bring peace. If you've lost peace, joy, and righteousness, there's a demon involved. Amen? So in this, he says also, verse 13, these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the what? The Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man doesn't get it doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things. Why? Because he has dimensional perception. Does everybody get that? Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. As long as, but what is the price of the mind of Christ. Cooperation. Cooperation. You just can't be a fly by night. Hello? You're going to have to be led and you must follow. You must be submissive, obedient, and willing to do whatever it takes. And in this, God is going to bring us to a place where he leads us more wisdom, more understanding. He says, eyes to see, ears to hear and a harder spirit to perceive and follow, to discern and see and interpret. We call that perception. Those that are truly connected in the spirit are able to judge and discern because they have dimensional perception that connects past, present, and future and understands time. Has everybody got it? Timing, timing, timing. Everything's associated with God's timing. They are able to see and interpret and respond according to the character of Christ. And remember, right now, God is looking for individuals that are Christ's character. Christ looks for Christ. Jesus looks for Jesus. Amen. In Ephesians 5. Dimensional perception. You know, if there was more... Again, I'm going to go back to wisdom is an attribute of the Holy Spirit when we are filled with the Holy Spirit. But if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you can't get the fullness. You can't perceive. You can't understand. You can't discern. And you'll miss God's timing. And you'll miss timing completely. It's like a car that gets out of time. 
starts running rough. People get rough when they're out of God's time. They backfire a lot out of their mouth. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5, verse 1. Therefore, be what? Imitators. Everyone say imitators. imitators. Of God as dear children. And walk in what? Walk in what? Love. As Christ also loved us and given himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Come on, read this with me. We're sowing it. But What? fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness or foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of things. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Hmm. Let no one what? Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. Very powerful. So we're to imitate Jesus in thoughts. We're to imitate Jesus in thoughts. I'm going to say that again. We're to imitate Jesus in thoughts. One of the things he wants us to do is think the way he thinks. He wants us to see the way he sees. Amen. In works, in conduct. Do not be deceived. Amen? So that we can also discern in this deceptive influence. Everyone say deceptive influence. This is where a person loses control over self. When they have taken the bite, the bait, when they have bitten the bait of Satan, and they've agreed with something, that is corruptible, that is unjust, that is not of God, what begins to happen is they lose control over the old man. Does everybody get it? Because the old man just got strengthened. Amen? That's where the word tells us that the fruit of the Spirit is self-control because it's control over the old man. Ephesians 2. Is everybody okay? Ephesians 2. In verse 1. What does it say? And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, According to the prince of the power of the air, which is Antichrist, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were idiots out there and dead in trespasses he what he made us alive together with christ and by grace you've been saved and grace is god's plan of escape it is not unmerited favor everyone earns god's favor it's unmerited love and he raised us up together and made us do what sit together where in heavenly places in christ Jesus. Well, listen, if we're seated in heavenly places, doesn't that allow me and you access to all dimensions? Yes. But my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of relationship, lack of connection, lack of being filled, lack of being fed by the word, lack of worship. And that the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by God's plan or by grace, you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Somebody got it. 
Praise God. For we are his what? Workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should do what? Walk in them. Walk in them. So we see here that the Antichrist spirit that rules the atmosphere controls people. One of the things that happens is people become brought under mind control. And in this, the enemy begins to use individuals. But the more you get into God's presence, the more you begin to break the stuff off, your confessions will begin. That's why it's called the sword of the spirit. breaks things off. The greatest thing to be is free. And one of the things that is the greatest thing is freedom from emotional pain. Amen? Mental pain is emotional pain. Sometimes <laughs> it's more painful than physical pain. Because sometimes people just don't know how to deal with it. They go to the doctor, and the doctor puts them on medication. But they're still tormented. I haven't seen too many doctors cast out a devil. They need to cast out the devil out of themselves first. Hallelujah. They're under the pharmacia, dude, you know. Hallelujah. Let's go to Hebrews 2. So we are his, his workmanship. We are the offspring. We have been granted authority and dominion. We are blessed every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. We are also joint heirs of Christ, which allows me and you access everywhere as long as we are in divine order, walking upright. Hebrew 2, verse 1. Let's speak it. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we what? Lest we what? Drift. A lot of drifters today. We got a lot of drifters in the body. Lots of them. Verse 2. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedient receive the just reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great of salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. For he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels. Now I want you to understand this. In other words, he's not put the world under the authority of the angels. Who's he put the world under the authority of? Us. We're the ones that are blessed every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. We are actually multidimensional. We are made of a what? Spirit, soul, and body. So that means something powerful. That Satan's kingdom needs a body. It needs a human body to function and do their work in this realm. They cannot do it without a human body. Does everybody get this? They cannot do it without a human body. That's why he had to put on flesh and went into women, didn't he? And they'll, all of them got arrested. And they didn't get no bail. There was no bail. They got a life sentence automatically. They were judged already. So those that put on flesh that have not been authorized by God automatically go to prison and wait. So in this, the only thing that they can do is influence you and me by a voice. That's it. The Bible says that the devil walks around as a what? Roaring lion. He's nothing but an ant with a big megaphone. Right? So these voices, these presences, is the only thing that can influence you. Once they influence us and we agree with it, then they have access in us. But they're truly trying to get into a body to do the work of Satan's kingdom in this realm. 
Other than that, they cannot. Does everybody get this? So what they try to do is they try and trap us so that we react and open the door. So we speak things. So we agree with things that open the door. Then we lose identity. So we touch things that are unclean. Is everybody okay? Remember, verse 5, we can look at this. For he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels. In other words, they're subject to the children of God. But one testified in a certain place saying, What is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you take care of him? You have made him a little lower than the angels. Now I want you to understand something that we are a little lower than the righteous angels. But the fallen angels, we are above them. Amen? You have crowned them with glory and honor and set them over the works of your hands. You have put all things of subjection under his feet or their feet. So everything is subject to us. We have authority over it. That's why the enemy messes with the mind. The first thing he steals is your identity. He causes people to compromise, to become complacent and lazy. He likes to fill them with false doctrines so they become prideful, arrogant. They put themselves in position God's not put them in. And they become cursed. Everybody okay? Hallelujah. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him, but now we do not see, yet see all things put under him. But we see who? Jesus, who has made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for what? Every single one of us. Praise God. For it was fitting for him for whom all things and by whom are all things. In the beginning, many sons to bringing what? Many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one. For which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Saying what? I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. So who shows up when you and I praise? Jesus. Again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom you've given me. So that's what he says. He comes in when we worship the Lord. And he looks to the Father and says, here we are, the children you've given me. We've come to worship and honor you. And when you touch his heart, he slams yours. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> All things are subject towards Christ. We are birthed into a spiritual reunion, a reconnecting. When we are born again, we are being reconnected. But the enemy wants to disconnect us in every area. Always. We are hard-pressed all the time. There's a constant battle. How many of y'all know we were born in a war? We are born in an existing war. It has been going on and on and on. You know, you may look in the news and see wars and how children are in the war and, you know, mothers carrying children running around and buildings blowing up and all kinds of stuff and whatever, and a lot of it is, anyways, ain't going on. So, but we were born in that same war. What you see phys more physical locations of war is because there's more spiritual locations of war in the same areas. Where there's more peace in an area, that's what means spiritual peace. Why? Because there's dominion being taken. Everybody got it? So what you see manifesting in the physical is because of what's going on in the spiritual. So we see here that the enemy uses influence. Satan's kingdom needs, again, a human to do their evil work in this realm because they are blocked from physical form 
until the end. But at, at the end, towards the end of Revelation, they will, they will all come in this realm. People are going to freak out when they see some of these dudes. We won't be here. We're catching the first bus out of here, man. No hitchhiking. You got to have a ticket. And you can't call Uber. <laughs> Hallelujah. There'll be no yellow cabs or anything like that. So those that are born again, hallelujah, and filled with the Spirit have dimensional perception to evil influence of lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, sorcery, mind control. You know, some of the things that are happening right now is the enemy just repackages things. You know, and he uses technology to repackage things. If you really think about all the technology and, and the sorcery and mind control and, and, and religions and education, everything is just repackaged. But behind it all is an occult satanic worship. Everything tries to replace God as creator. Everything. Even science tries to replace God as creator. Does everybody get this? Everything, because this world is ruled by Satan's kingdom. But we must have the perception to understand and discernment to understand these things, to see things through. We know that we are in the last days. Look at the media, education, the medical, even the currency control, climate control. All of these are areas of Satan's influence to provoke Mankind from following or knowing the truth. Always try to mislead. In 2 Peter chapter 2. False doctrines of technology. Second Peter chapter 2. In verse 1, it says what? But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth was, will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. So we see that false doctrines associated with false prophets and teachers and so forth, self-proclaimed prophets and teachers, these are false doctrines of knowledge and technology that replace God as creator. It's self-exaltation. In Romans chapter 8. You got all of these professors now with all of these high degrees of all education and college. And if you really think about it, how many of them really are followers of Christ? Not many at all. So this is what our children are being taught. They are being taught demonic Technology and knowledge behind all of it is to prevent individuals from knowing Christ. Think about that. That's why so many homes are messed up because the families are not teaching them the truth. That's why so many children are messed up. Well, most of them because they're not being the example. In Romans 8, Remember, we're to be expressing the character of Christ. I never saw Christ react. He got angry, but he didn't sin. He responded, amen, called people hypocrites. But he didn't go too much further than that. You know what I'm saying? He never reacted. They tried to push his buttons, and he turned everything around. They gave him a question, he returned a question. 
He knew how to outwit them. Why? Because he had dimensional perception. <laughs> but remember something. It says imitate God as good children. It doesn't mean that we are gods, but he wants us to imitate his character with wisdom. Because he who's in you and I is greater than he who's in the world. You know, when, when I had my vis first visitation from the Lord, and, and I've shared this before, for two months, I knew I wasn't Jesus, but I'm telling you, I was Jesus. There was only one voice in me. And that was the voice of the Father. For almost two months straight, the Jesus that was in me possessed this vessel. There was no old man. There was nothing. I went into places to sit in the presence of God and people would be laughing all around me and falling off their seats. I was taken in dreams and visions, taken to places in the future, saw things happen, saw the return of the Lord. All kinds of things that went on for almost two months. I couldn't understand why it was just continually. Horse talked to me, all kinds of things that went on. <laughs> we were driving by the other day with my brother in the car. I said, man, this is where the horse came up and talked to me. He said, no, I'm not nuts. These things happened. If these things, I, and I kept saying to the Lord, Lord, if these things, you keep doing this stuff, why don't you do it to other people? They'll know the truth. He kept saying, because I'm showing you. I had so many miracles and manifestations and so many things that happened in those two months. Just like the word says that in the prophet Joel, that I will pour out my spirit and they will prophesy their dreams and visions and so forth. I'm telling you, in me, Jesus possessed this vessel. I, it was wild because even animals saw Jesus in me. Snakes did too. Boy, they hated the Jesus in me. They stiffened right up. <laughs> But I believe that this is where God wants to get us to again. Man, do I desire that he do that all over again. <laughs> Snapping right. You kidding me? I'd live there forever. I didn't want to come back. But hallelujah. <laughs> Let's go on. <laughs> where did I say to go? Romans 8. In verse 18. Let's speak it, for I consider, oh, this is it, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be com compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Here we are. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also be delivered from where? Bondage of corruption into the who? Glorious liberty of the children of God. All creation. Hmm. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the fruits of the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for what? The adoption and the redemption of our bodies. Isn't it going to be wonderful? No aches and pains. Amen. Snap. No stupid thoughts. Sheesh. I always tell people, I'd be able to play tennis on both sides. <laughs> Scuba dive with no gear. You want to see what's going on in Mars? You're there. I mean, no limitations. Hallelujah. Verse 24. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance. That means endurance. Acts 9.
Acts chapter 9. In verse 17. And Ananias went his way and entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Receive your sight by being filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Immediately there fell from, fell from him something like scales, dimensional veils. And he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. Now I want you to grab hold of something. What did Paul talk about? Revelations. Didn't he say, I know a man that was taken, what, to the third heaven? Paul walked dimensionally. Look at the things that he wrote in all the epistles. They were multidimensional letters. He had dimensional perception on being so filled with the Spirit of God. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Hmm? Oh, Acts 22. Acts 22. That's why there's still so many people that are not baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's a ploy of the enemy. Amen? Amen. Can you imagine if everyone was baptized in the Holy Spirit, tongue speaking, seen spiritually, taking dominion over territory, the world would be changed. In verse 12. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Then a, certain an, then a certain Ananias, then a certain Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good testimony with all the Jews who dwelt there, came to me and stood and said to me, Now, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at the same hour I looked up at him, now, Saul, this is Saul talking about after Ananias came in. Amen? And then he said, The God of our fathers has chosen you that you should know his will and see the just one and hear the voice of his mouth. Now, here's, this is important. That you would know his will. To know his will takes perception. To see takes perception. And to hear takes perception. Does everybody got it? Oh, hallelujah. To know his will, see the just one, and hear his voice. That's dimensional perception. 1 Timothy 4. In verse 1. Now, is the enemy going to allow you to receive the things of God? No. He's going to try and steal them completely. That's what he does. He steals it right away. He tries to compromise it. He tries to get you to put it on the shelf. Yeah, I got it, and then put it on the shelf and never use it. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and what? Doctrines of demons speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Seared conscience is no perception. Everybody got it. There is no perception. They are emotionally and mentally bound that's a seared conscience. They've been taken captive. The soul has been taken captive. And 2 Timothy chapter 2. In 
There isn't conviction. The heart is hardened. In verse 21. Is everybody there? Gosh, you got quiet. What happened? Let's speak it. Therefore, if anyone does what? Cleanses himself from what? The latter. He will be a what? Vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call out of the Lord out of a what? Pure hearts, so associations bring impartations. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife and open doors of demons. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach and patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth. And that they may come to their what? Senses. Senses. Is that a sense of perception? Yeah. Senses. But the, he's talking about spiritual perception. Dimensional perception. Because people have their normal senses, even though they may be seared too. You know? <laughs> and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been ca taken captive to do his will. Wow. Why? Be they became captive because of no perception. <laughs> and they could not cleanse themselves from lies. They could not cleanse themselves from the lies. That's what we call strongholds. It's a memory lie. They're still trying to prove what they believe, even though it's a lie. It keeps them in a state of bondage. Is everybody okay? This is what we got to be careful of. In 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 6, therefore, therefore I what? Therefore I what? Uh, uh, let's go to verse, I said 1, didn't I? Okay. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Therefore I remind you to what? Stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but what? Power and love and a sound mind. So where there's fear, where there's insecurity, where there's anxiousness, all of those things will nullify a sound mind. Unworthiness, all of those things will nullify a sound mind. Does everybody get it? And it will nullify perception. Where there is fear, there's no power, there's no love, and there's no sound mind. There's me, myself, and I. Second Gen, chapter 1. All right, let's go to First John, chapter 2. Let's go there first, and then we'll close at 2 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Well, yes. Do not what? Love Don't love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. He who does the will of God abides forever. He who does the will of God abides forever. He who does not do the will of God will not abide forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come by which we know that it is the what? 
the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been with us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us because they were taken out by the Antichrist spirit. But you have an anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty from the Holy One. And you know what? Listen, if, so understand, it goes, always goes back to the anointing. Amen? The eternal presence and power and truth of God Almighty. Everything always goes back to the anointing. Jesus was the anointed one. That's how he overcame. Amen? Everything goes back to the anointing. Everything goes back to true repentance so that we're washed by the blood, getting cleansed from our past. Everything goes back to the anointing so that we stay reconnected. And then we know all things. Well, knowing all things takes dimensional perception, doesn't it? If you don't have dimensional perception, you're not going to know all things. Do you know that some people don't even know it's the last days? When you ask them, do you know it's the last days, they think they're going to die. No, not for you, but for everyone, man. Do you know it's the last days? Really? What month is it? I mean, people just don't get, they don't even know it. They have no perception at all what's going on. Because they've been being fed by doctrines of demons. Amen. And we'll close at 2 John, verse 7. Is everybody okay? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. For many deceivers have gone in, out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver, not antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things which we work for, but that we may receive a what? Full reward. Hmm. Remember, the enemy comes every day to try and trick us and snare us. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house nor greet him. For he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. Having many things to write to you, I did not wish to do so with paper and ink, but I hope to come to you and speak face to face that our joy may be full. The children of your elect sister greet you. Father, we are honored and blessed for your word tonight. Let us continue to walk in the anointing, releasing the wisdom, understanding, discernment, that we may have dimensional perception of your timing, of your will. Lord, we repent for anything that we've opened ourselves up to and come in agreement that has moved us out of position. We ask that you restore us, reset us, reunite us, and reposition us in your divine order that we may walk in dimensional perception to know all things for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.